so again, thank you. Thank you for the time. I think what we what we're hoping to do is have this more of a discussion to sort of back and forth. And I'm going to maybe kick it off by asking you as so we've read all your pamphlets. And is it is it possible to if about focus areas in Northampton, is it possible to say a typical one of your clients from Northampton might be someone who uses X, Y, and Z services? Just can you paint a picture for us of who, who you're well, providing services? Yeah. To? Well. Okay. Um, so so do you mean somebody from Northampton as opposed to somebody from a different town might use we're only these focused, services? We're only focused just... on Northampton. Okay. So if, 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 yeah. if, to the extent that that's possible. Too yeah, I mean, regular. yeah, I mean, I think um, generally a service package might look like um, homemaking um, for assistance with housework, laundry shopping, um, maybe some personal care for some hands-on assistance. Um, somebody might get the meals on wheels um, or they could attend the dining site. Um, they could have an emergency response system. That's the pendant that you wear or the wrist bed where you can press the button. Um, they might um, use some of our transportation, although I know you guys have um, your own transportation. So um, I think, you know, it depends on what they're looking for, like medical appointments maybe. Yeah. Um, or they might um, go to an adult day help, um, which is also something that we offer. Um, so those are some very, very basic services and, and kind of what um, I would say a very basic kind of service package might look like. Yeah. Oh, I mean, so any, <laughs> any sense? Of... I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can we, Laura and Val on mine, I just want to make sure you can hear us okay? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Any estimate about how many people in Northampton on an average month might be your clients? I didn't bring, I should have uh, looked okay. at that ahead of time. I can tell you that we just surpassed 2,000 consumers that Total. we provide in our service area. Yeah, and we I, can get you that information. Okay. So, so it was Northampton, we assume we're the largest community in your service area? Second area? largest, our West, largest is Westfield. Westfield, okay. So as I said that, I need to say Westfield. <laughs> and people, how do people typically get to you, are they? Referred by someone else, they get on their own, or some mix. Yeah, it's it's really a mix. Um, anybody can call and make a referral for our services um, for either somebody else or a self referral. Um, a lot of times, um, caregivers end up calling. Yeah. They're looking for assistance for a loved one. Um, we get a lot of referrals from the hospitals or the nursing facilities. Um, so really, um, it can be anyone. Are all of your services income based? Um, so our services, there's a variety of programs. I'll, I'll start with that. Um, so we are state funded. We're mainly state funded, but we do get federal funds. So some of our programs um, are paid for on a sliding fee scale. However, some of them are mass health based programs. So that if somebody's on mass health, then they would not have a payment. And some are taxpayer services, so there's no payment. It might be a voluntary donation that someone might want to make, but they don't have to. For instance, home delivery. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the circumstance. That sometimes it's it's very hard to describe the way our agency works because it's unique to nonprofits. We have uh, 24 ASAPs, which stands for Aging Service Access Points across the Commonwealth. We cover this area, um, but Unlike other not-for-profits like ServiceNet, we primarily purchase the services that are provided to people. And if you have a sort of a thought about what that might look like, we're, we're probably purchasing about $10 million worth of services a year, at least that's a, last year, uh, on behalf of our consumers. We do a lot as well as an agency, but for the most part, all the in-home services, with some exceptions, are provided by uh, vetted and trusted provider partners. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're the only agency that can give people access to certain things and they they have to channel through us to get to those. So we are in, in a sense, a privatized arm of the state, um, basically contracted to do certain things to find out if people are eligible for our state home care program 
or for uh, the Mass Health or Choices. It's also called Choices Program and a few others. Do you want to give any more specifics on that? Okay. Because that really underscores access point. So mm -hmm. you yeah. right. so you start with a with the budget where you purchase the services, and then over the course of the year, you you hope for third party reimbursements on a lot of that in order to backfill your your coffers. Sort Pretty of. close. Right? Yeah. I mean that in many regards, the state tells us exactly what we can pay out per person, or they give us an allotment per person, and in essence, they expect us to be like a managed care provider where we utilize maybe 90% of the funds for Bob, but you happen to need 110% of the funds. So, so we kind of have to do a little bit of balancing to provide the right amount of service. And then there's some that are cost reimbursement, and right. that would be the Matt's Health product. So right. it's, it's called Choices, and that would be relatively whatever someone needs to remain at home and to remain independent. You also provide some nursing services? Sure. Not direct care, yeah. but nursing for assessments for eligibility. Are there any? Are you able to meet the demand? I mean, you do have people who you have a waiting list. I mean, if someone calls. Yeah, them. it's a good. It's a really good question. So the way I frame that is, if you're the one person on uh, what we call a pending referral list you're not getting a particular service that you want. And then you would say, absolutely not. They're not able to meet demand because I'm not getting my uh, personal care Tuesday, assistant yeah. on Tuesday. Um, but in general, so I mentioned we have over 2000 consumers. Well, we have that pending referral list for portions of a service plan for, what is it around a little over hundred people right now? But we have over hundred people coming in a month. So. You know, if there's someone hard to serve, so a, a hard to serve consumer looks like this. They're very particular, which is their right to, to have a certain type of person at a certain time of day. And when I say certain type, I don't mean ethnicity. I mean, they want this particular service um, and they want it at a particular time of day and it's a short period of time. So it's very difficult to fill that and let's add it, let's make it a little harder. They happen to be not the most pleasant person they happen to have a large dog and they happen to be a smoker. Well, that's a very difficult case to fill. It's our obligation to fill it and we do our best to do that, but that might be more of a challenge than someone that's like, I'm flexible. Come Monday, Tuesday, and it'd be great if you came in a larger chunk of time. And I don't have all these other complicated things. So then it becomes an easier case to fill. And, and, and I'm speaking in terms of Northampton because relatively Northampton is not a uh, tremendously difficult community to serve in terms of the location yeah. and, the, and the critical mass. We're not as rural, yeah. Yeah. That makes it, so it sounds like, so putting someone's idiosyncrasies aside, that it, it's a fairly, so someone can expect to get services within a reasonable amount of time if they knock on your door tomorrow. Yes, and, and what I'm referring to is not necessarily the challenges mm -hmm. that the agency is under, because we are very good at getting out, evaluating someone, going through all the steps that are required on behalf of our contract and the state requirements to get them eligible for service if sure. they're eligible. The challenge becomes with the referral agencies where we're trying to get a provider partner to, to give an, an employee uh, connecting them to that. They have to work within their schedule. They have to work with uh, There's a variety of them. And their availability of workers. So it, 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 that becomes a challenge at times. Uh, during COVID, it was worse, and uh, uh, things are are improving. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't unusual to see our wait list, which um, again, when I say wait list, I'm talking about maybe one particular service that mm -hmm. someone had. They might get all the other services and be waiting for that personal care help at home. And um, that list was you know 40, 50 people, but we are bringing in that many a month. So again, That's it doesn't mean that someone hadn't been on for a longer period of time. That was particularly difficult to 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 fill that key, um, so it really varies. So is there still a shortage in general in the provider world of personal care people, homemakers, et cetera? We'd like to see more. I mean, we we'd like to see them pay higher rates. We've increased yeah. the rates that we pay. Uh, some of the rates are set by the state, but some of the rates the ASAP set individually. Again, aging service access points, which is we're one of. Um, so we do increase those rates. We're currently going through an RFP process now. 
we're increasing the rate again after just doing a 10% um, add-on during COVID and doing other percent. And again, we're trying to incentivize them to pick up our consumers and provide service to them. And in turn, we're hoping that they pay people a really nice wage to get them to do this really important professional sure. work. How is the program going with Cooley Dickinson where you're trying to evaluate people who are in the hospital to get the services like in there at day of discharge? Good question. Um, so the hospital to home program, um, which we recently got the grant with Cooley Dickinson um, to work with staff. So um, we have a care advisor. She is over there. She um, she's there daily. She does rounds with the case management staff. Um, she meets with patients um, when they come into the hospital. So she's able to provide them either with information and resources, or she's able to do an assessment in the hospital before somebody goes home so that we can get this referral process started sooner. Um, Does she so do any work with people who are already Highland Valley people who are in the hospital. Does she sort of help bridge that gap? Yeah, she absolutely does. She's sort of the eyes and the ears. So um, everybody has an assigned case manager. Mm -hmm. um, and so if somebody's consumer goes into the hospital, Renee is there and will let the case manager know so and so has been admitted and you know I had a conversation with them. Right. They're going to be discharged, you know, maybe next week or they have to go to the nursing facility. Um, so yeah, there's really good communication. So that was something you were not able to do as efficiently or at all prior to this grant? It was something that, yeah, um, we, because we were sort of, we work closely with Cooley Dickinson, but, yeah. but a lot of times, you know, somebody goes into the hospital and they don't even remember that they had services from Highland like, Valley or they know they have services, but they don't know where from. So there would be sort of that, you know, um, communication gap. We um, certainly couldn't afford to embed care by Sure, care. no, I didn't think so. Yeah, so that that's that's what the grant value uh, sounds yeah. like is this embedded person. Yes. Yep. Which is a big thing that the sure. state is also dedicated to. It's happening in a variety of services. Mm -hmm. I worked at the hospital years ago doing oh. discharge planning. Ah, so yeah. so so I know. So I saw this. I said, well, that's kind of sort of what I used to do, but yeah. I but I work in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's, it is complicated for a consumer or a prospective consumer to figure out all of what's available. I feel like this state that provides people a lot. Uh, some of the areas where we have challenges are in between kind of an acute stage and getting back home or some of the things that fall in between, like who cares for their animal, who takes the food out of the fridge, who does. And, and we're not good at that as in our in our system. It's a challenge. And we rely on informal supports in many situations. Um, but the agency really gives sort of the bread and butter of what can help um, have someone remain at home for longer than normally they'd be able to. And the benefit is you, usually, uh, I would say the vast majority of the time, that's what people want. And of course, we're only going to provide it if that's what they want. Um, and it saves the Commonwealth money. So it's kind of a beautiful system in that regard that we're helping people, uh, giving them choice, giving them dignity, helping them stay at home. Uh, the things we don't do are the kind of the, the complex nursing. We do evaluations. We have nurses right. go out and do evaluations, but we don't do trait care, wound care, things so like that's that. Really so sometimes there's DNA. confusion yeah. between, right, yeah. And, and, yeah. so sure. In other areas, you wanna speak to that? We don't do emergency. Uh, we don't have emergency mental health, um, although we do have a protective service department and we are required to go out sometimes within 24 hours or to um, help uh, in a situation, but that certainly emergency providers would be involved, whether that be fire, police, ambulance, hospital, there's a variety of other uh, players that would be involved in that situation. You, I just wanted to shift to, um, sure. there, I saw in the in the flyer that you had um not you didn't just do meals on wheels, so you have places where people go to socialize and have meals. Where is it in Northampton that you so do that? We don't have a great place um that people well, I should say I think we have a great place, but it's a place a lot of people have reported they don't feel comfortable. So we our base of operation is in the Walter Salvo next door. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone's welcome to come and have those meals in Northampton, but a lot of people have reported they feel uncomfortable going to the housing building. 
to do that. I just, it seems like, especially because there are people who don't drive, mm -hmm. that the senior center is here and offers meals, mm -hmm. you know, not three meals a day, but, you know, we do have, and so it seems as if it would maybe be a good, you know, it would make sense to have it be in a different part of the city so that um, people who, who couldn't walk here, you know, maybe to have it in Florence or- We're something. completely open to, if there's a place in the city, whether it be Florence or uh -huh. North, we would be happy to investigate that. We have 16 sites uh, throughout our service area. So it's not the only one that we have here. It oh. just happens to be our, our base of operations where we're, where we're cooking. Oh, oh so, we're, I mean, I just, I just, so there are other places- in Northampton. That's the only one. Oh, that's Northampton. what I'm speaking to. Oh, okay. It, it used to, years ago, there was a satellite site at the Congregational Church in Florence. Uh -huh. Yes. And I think that was. The, the previously, was there used to be all, um, many of them were uh, based in a church. Yeah. And then yeah. that kind of, the uh, it dwindled and, and not as many yeah. people were coming. Um, what has revitalized a lot of the community dining sites is the take and go meals. A lot of people like to come pick up the meal. And, and take it with them. And we're doing that as well. But um, we have seen a big shift over the years. That used to be kind of where uh, all the base of operations were for those sites, but they're all over now throughout. They're, they're, in, they're in Cummington and uh, sometimes they're not every day. Uh, Chester has a site, uh, Westfield has sites. I mean, they're, they're all over. So, it, it, but it's not convenient. No one's gonna drive from North Maine. Right. Right, right. That's that. I was just thinking about people who don't drive. The other question I had is that, um, you know, I know that that it's a a new thing that there are, are um people who are becoming older who are neurodivergent and um kind of look for a lot of times it's single men, and um and they're they just are looking for support groups. And I didn't know whether you had any kind of services for that? That's the type of thing that we've normally sought uh, grant proposals for, uh -huh. and we provide uh, funds for. It's not something that we could necessarily, um, that I could say definitively we could do that, but for instance, your transportation program here, we, we support that program via the, a grant. Right. Um, so that's the type of thing that we probably would do that way. We don't have a lot of licensed clinicians on staff. I'm one of them. Uh -huh. uh, we have a few others, but they work in other capacities. So it's not like we have someone that could go and do that type of work um, on a regular basis. I'm a I'm a retired special ed teacher, and um, but I also I, I do this, my shift for Northampton neighbors. Neighbors is answering the phone, and it's just that's one of the things like where you feel like you can always like sort of feel like you can sort of send somebody in a direction, but there's been th three different guys that I can think of who called and all, all three of them said, listen, I have Asperger's um, and I'm like looking for a support group, you know, right. and, and there just doesn't seem to be any like that. Either. Yeah, I mean, it's easier with um, the video meetings. I mean, certainly something that's easier to put together, but it doesn't replace the face to face in my opinion. Right. And then it becomes drawing people in from a large service area, but we would be willing if there was a provider out there in our service mm -hmm. area that uh, felt like they could provide that, we would we would entertain an RFP when our process opens again next year. Um, a couple things to note: you mentioned the dining site, so this isn't uh, to pressure or, or uh, imply uh, an opinion. But we work with many COAs to provide their meals. When we provide the meals. It gives less autonomy to the COA. That's a drawback, but it also costs nothing for the COA to do that. Um, I don't know that we ever provided meals to the COA way, way back in history. Maybe that was the case. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Um, but we do provide them. And they are at no cost. Uh, and we set up what community dining sites are taking those sites. And we have them every, all over. I mean, in many sites. In fact, Westfield recently had a take and go program where they had about 75, they said 60, 75 people a day coming and picking up the meal. And they asked us to take that over. Uh, because they want to use those funds for other things because it still costs them even though they were billing people at three dollars so it wasn't a donation it was a, it was a cost uh, it didn't cover all the costs so the director wanted to utilize those funds elsewhere and we were able to step in and provide that uh, which is something we we're happy to do
So it's it's an option if you ever have an interest. It's not it's not um, something that we haven't done. It, you, more uniquely, some COAs make their own meals and provide them and receive reimbursement, but there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. It has to meet uh, all the nutritional requirements. It has to get submitted. And there, there's other there's other work that goes into it. So it's not um, necessarily as favorable, but if there was an interest, if it was favorable to the COA, I should say. If there was an interest, I could connect you to other COAs, not within our service area, but at others where they do that um, as a possibility. So we're open to uh, collaborating in a variety of ways. That's really the point I was trying to make. Is it the federal money that helps subsidize the nutrition program? Yeah, absolutely. Do you provide any services for placing people in residential facilities? Um, so we don't, there's, there's no real, um, service for, for doing that. I mean, we can provide information if somebody is looking for that kind of thing. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to place somebody with Alzheimer's in, in the facility, depending on, um, their temperament mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, there's where to, where to go to find it. it yeah. It's not a yes or no. We have contracts with adult day health programs, um, we provide options counseling, which gives people a list of possible referral sources. Uh, it's really informational, but there isn't a placement service. Per yeah. se. Right. I was going to ask about the counseling. Is that done in the home? People would come to the Absolutely. home and then consult with them and then make recommendations or give them some support? For that? Yeah, ideally they wouldn't make an individual recommendation. They would give a list of options. And um, I'll add on our website, we have an interactive tool that gives a lot of resources that you can go in. You can place where you are, what service you're looking for, and we work hard to try to make sure that's up to date and uh, they're you know, good providers that are providing those services. So that's uh, something that's fun to look at. It's, you can do it with your phone uh, as well. So that could be at home. You can come to us. There's a variety of ways to do it. And I'll add, you know, to Battle's credit, we have done, what, over 300? We're, we're one of the highest volume a ASAPs with the options counseling, even though they're one, we're one of the smaller. So we're, we're utilizing it a lot. Because so that could scary. be continuous for more than one or two visits. It could be something that could... The options? Yeah, the yes. options can yeah. be a series of visits, depending on what... So somebody basically will identify a goal you know, I want to stay home or I'm looking for a nursing home or, you know, anything that they are wanting to do, the options counselor can yeah. help provide those resources. And it can take, you know, a number of different visits or phone calls. Um, so whatever somebody's needing. Okay. Do you still have the chore program? We do. Um, we offer the chore service as part of a service package if somebody's needing that. Um, generally, it's, um, there's three levels heavy chore for think for situations that are pretty bad like say a hoarding situation okay. um but we also offer light chores so you know if somebody wants just their oven cleaned out or the inside of the fridge cleaned out something like that other questions Amazing. there's a lot of Amazing. it's hard to have people really remember the, the number of things that are available it, it, it is hard to keep track of I'm trying to think, you want to talk about money management and benefits? Um, yeah, um, I think one of the a really popular services are benefits service or uh, support, program. support specialist oh. program. Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. So our, through our money management program. So our money management program um, offers assistance to people with the, paying the bills on a monthly basis. Um, anywhere. But the sense with making, not financially in terms of making giving them money, out, but helping them. Make, yeah. I want to make sure that's clear. No, they're, um, so they can help with, you know, sort of paying the bills, but, um, but Scott, our supervisor is also a trained um, application counselor, um, as well as we have a part-time benefit support specialist. So, they can help with applying for public benefits. They can um, help with applying for Medicaid. Fuel assistance, um, fuel assistance is the big one. Big tax deferrals. Um, any kind of public benefits that are available to people other than things like insurance or Medicare and prescription coverage 
is something that they can help with. So um, again, free of charge. Mm -hmm. it's very helpful to It was something that just came up where I was asked about that because Life Path was talking about a grant that they have. And people are like, oh, how come we don't have? And I was like, well, we do have that. <laughs> and I looked it up and we served over 200 people last year in that particular program. So. It was yeah, a question of uh, what Michelle here does here augments that and you augment mm -hmm. her some yeah, yeah it's absolutely. not it's not like we're competing, you know it's oh, like, no, no. It's it's just the need is so whatever great. more you walk into yeah. that's and, right. and that's and that's what we want. We want people sure. to have a variety of, of uh, places yeah. to go to get the help they need. That's right. I think no one's gonna memorize the entire packet. Sure. But as long as one you know, the phone number and we know how to find here and how to find you just Yep. Once that's the, the key to that's the that is the point the point. really <laughs> important that we yeah. want people to know that you just call us. We have um, a receptionist and then a supervisor that also backs up the receptionist. So always a live receptionist during our business hours. Um, we're easy, easily accessible. Uh, we're much larger than we were when I started at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, you know, that gives you more critical mass. So we have a variety of people that can help. Um, we just received feedback from the state that we did exceptional in our information and referral department. Great. So they're vetting us. I was got a 99. I was pretty happy about that. So, uh, where's that one? Where's that other one? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're happy. We're happy about that. So yeah, we're we're we stand by and we're trying to help people. You will hear stories where we couldn't help someone or they didn't get exactly what they were looking for or it didn't work. We we have someone right now that's wanting uh, transportation at the drop of a hat, almost for what sounds like medical yeah, emergency. emergency. And we just can't provide that level of service. So there are things we can't do. Um, it doesn't fill all okay. all needs, um, but we try to do the best we can to provide people with what they need. And, and we certainly partner closely with the COAs sure. who are also providing them right. uh, many different things, especially socializing. I mean, that, that's something we can't. I mean, we stop at the house and we bring them. Yeah, middle, right. but that's, it's, it's not it's, your. It's five minutes. Not your role. It's not. Yeah, it's so. Well, there's so many things that we count on each other to be able to do. Volunteers, you, you. we need them. We, <laughs> we, 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 we are um, very beholden to our volunteers. We have over a hundred volunteers. Uh, primarily in our money management program, which we have some openings mm -hmm. we need. Uh, we're really looking for uh, people for our ombudsman program, which are, does everyone know what that is? It's a person that goes into nursing homes, rest homes, and uh, make sure that the residents are receiving uh, fair treatment and care, and uh, none of the laws are being violated that pertain to them. Uh, they help um, kind of mitigate situations that are problematic. They help sort of uh, negotiate certain situations. So they're they're very useful. We need volunteers for that. Um, what am I forgetting? Drivers. We're always looking that's for that's drivers that's for that's our that's home delivered that's meals that's program. That's and I'm missing one. There's another one. Um, Something yeah. Else. Yeah. No, I but yeah, we 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 love our volunteers, and we'd love to have more. So if anyone's looking for any uh, volunteer opportunities, we're if you're all full, we're we're happy to. <laughs> we're happy to have you. Right. Said no one ever. <laughs> yeah. What evidence based? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're there, we're open to ideas or thoughts that you have. We're easily accessible. Um, our information, it, it should be everywhere. I have no problem giving my personal number if there's fault. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you have it. Thank you. Bob certainly you. has I, it. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can you can reach out. We want to be accessible to people. Like I said, we're not emergency services, but we know that time is of the essence in many situations. We want to make sure we're, we're giving people what they need within our strength. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much for thank you. Thank hanging you. with us for thank a while. You. Appreciate being here. Very nice. And and if you'd like to have us back, have us back. I will say I'll sign up Val. If you want Val to do any discussions where she gets more in depth on the services, so she kind of runs through all the services. Uh, that's something we've done at a lot of COAs. We just had a really successful, we didn't organize it. Steve Connor, 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 Connor yeah. uh, organized it. There was about 50 some odd people at Hadley. It was, we were amazed. We what may make sense, I'm thinking of what you're doing tomorrow is going to be neighbors once a month. Um, We've done like four of them. Done them, for them. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard to get, I mean, there's so many, they have a fair amount of people. Yeah. Well, so I'm sure we haven't talked to every person that they have, but if you want to have something at your 
in your building Great. or organize a lunch and learn or Val's an excellent speaker and she'll go over all the services that we have. Great. I'll reach out to you, Val. We do have a lunch and learn program here, so we very okay. easily can. And some next great food. I will say we're one of the very few ASAPs that make our own food. There, I think there's two of us, maybe three of us still that do it. The rest use caterers and they re-therm, they reheat yeah, the food yeah, and they yeah. deliver. We make our own food. We have since the beginning and uh, we continue to. Do you make it at all the different sites or that made it one site? No, we make it in the kitchen next door. The other kitchen is everything. And, yeah, we're doing about a thousand meals a day yeah. between wow. the ones we make and frozen meals that we provide. That's, that's the entire service area, not just North Ham. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Not just no, we have the Huntington and yeah. the yeah. Plainfield. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's what we consider themselves <laughs> lucky to get it sooner or hotter, yeah. About 650 square miles. So it's, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's just yeah. a big, it is a geographically big service area, like every other service provider in this part of the state. Yeah. Definitely. So we're at your uh, at your beck and call. You just let us know. Thanks again. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know they find too. I didn't know if there were specific questions. They can just pop the door. Yep. Very good. Thank Take you. Take care of the degree. Thanks again. Nice yeah. meeting you, Dal. I had no idea they provided that much service. No idea. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to have session. Maybe. So let's get back to the real our, job. our, our day job. <laughs> our day job. So we have the call to order. Um, skip right over the public comment period, but there's no one either online or in the room. So we're fine. Um, we have the minutes from our June 11th meeting, which I know seems long. <laughs> <but no. laughs> yeah. So um, we've had a chance to review the minutes and remember what we did two months ago. Um, can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes? No move. And second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I think Kim would just gonna slide right on over to your report. Sounds good. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, a couple updates for you. I wanted to give you an update on the team here at the Senior Center. We are currently recruiting for two positions. Um, our program coordinator and staff assistant for those individuals have left for other opportunities and we're currently working to fill those two positions. Um, they are critical positions for us in terms of helping to plan, organize, orchestrate <laughs> <laughs> uh, the programs and events that happen here at the senior center. And then as well as the staff assistant who plays a critical role in operations um, as well as helping Megan with media and marketing. So both of those are critical roles for us that uh, we're in the middle of recruiting for now. Um, obviously, we want to move through that process as quickly as we can, but also critical to get the right person on board. So uh, get, I'll keep you updated on that as we move forward. Um, and the team in the meantime is being a team, <laughs> is which, which is what we do well. We have a great team here, so everybody's kind of helping to cover those responsibilities as we recruit. Um, transportation, uh, the PVTA uh, fares are back back in place now after August 31st. So the NoHo shuttle, that uh, that pilot is back on, which means that fares are 75 cents now. If you have a valid ID, uh, $1.50 regular fare if you don't. And we have provided extra time for people to be here to pick up those PBT, PBTA IDs. Uh, we continue to look for grant funding for our taxi service couple updates from the building from our notes for our previous meeting in June is that we at this point in time now have the IT upgrades installed in the great room. So we have a new complement of microphones which will make meetings, presentations uh, a lot smoother, a lot easier to, to be heard. Uh, we can now use four microphones at a time as opposed to the sort of one and a half that we had previously. Um, we also have a new projector, um, brighter screen, uh, easier to use as well. Um, a few tweaks that are, are we just need to work through in terms of the mounting of the projector and the sound, but for the most part, those upgrades are in place and operational. And the darkening shades. And we also have the the blinds installed at this point as well. So um, the top half of them, kind of as you see these windows in here, the top half are room darkening. 
bottom half are not quite room darkening because we don't want the room to be totally dark during movies, but definitely between the brighter projector as well as the, the blinds, uh, that's been a great addition for, you the, for the gray. We oh, really yeah. noticed the difference. Um, blinds also will be helpful from a temperature perspective as well, both in the summer and the winter. So we'll, um, you know, that will be helpful in that room too. So we've got that down, which is good. A um, couple updates for programs and services. Um, just want to share a couple numbers with you again. Uh, for August, your favorite part. My favorite part. Well, it's not my favorite part, but it, I, I think the numbers are a concrete part anyway. Um, 61 orientations, 45 new members joined in August, um, and 16 returning. Um, average daily attendance at this point is a, is close to 170, just shy of 170. Um, Tuesdays continue to be our busiest day, and we have almost 200 people in here a day on Tuesdays. Um, so that's the busiest. Um, talking of meals, uh, we served 447 meals, both curbside and dine-in during the month of August. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of the number of people that have come in the building during the month. Um, Michelle uh, just gave me the update there that there have been two volunteers that have completed the training for fuel assistance and will begin taking appointments soon. Mm -hmm. So we will see appointments available um, pretty soon. The big announcement, Arts Night Out. Our first Arts Night Out is, is tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening from 5 to 7, and it is our first Arts Night Out that is featuring two artists in the building rather than one. So we have Ren Hodes, uh, who her artwork is in the hallway of what was traditionally our art gallery. And then Martha McCormick is in the bistro, and her artwork is up. So Jean, we're ready to go. We've got refreshments ready to go. Um, so the best place to be tomorrow from five to seven is here. Um, and then followed by all the rest of the art nights location after you start here. And some, <laughs> and some, of, the, some of the, I think she's going to hang stuff in the, um, cat in the cafe too. But, um, what, um, I, oh, what we need to do is name the other cat. Okay. About that hallway gallery isn't enough. There is a hallway gallery. No, we have two galleries. I have to be able to when I make announcements. Oh, to say the, where it is. Bistro gallery, hallway gallery. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm I think joking. Be, yeah, yeah. I mean, hallway sounds a little bit, but bistro. I felt like I was sure. I thought maybe we could. Yeah. We could could call it. Okay. Call it gallery, 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 gallery for next week. Gallery one. Gallery. Gallery. It's really only for I'll be advertising. You know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and sending people notices that that's where their their work is going to be. Yeah. You know, like because I have to tell them where it could be the too. H gallery and the B gallery. Yes, yeah. 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 well, and the B show. Well, and and it actually did take a good bit of work. I mean, certainly for Jean and the committee to put the schedule together and organize that. Also for the team here to shift a lot of the advertising that we've done. So there needed to be some redesign in terms of the city website where we feature the artists because now there's two, just kind of a logistics in terms of who's gonna be advertised yeah. that month and how. Um, so it did did take a little bit of work from a logistics perspective to put that in place, but um, I think that'll be a, a phenomenal art site out featuring art throughout the building rather than, um, certainly the hallway has been phenomenal all along, but this expands it and gives a little bit. Uh, well, hopefully, I mean, it had been what you said in the past that Two artists have each with their own following, sort of ups the ante of the number of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm kind of excited to see what happens tomorrow night because there'll be twice as many people. Yeah, I'll be here, so I'm, I'm excited. excited. Oh, you're, you're excited on? Well. Yeah. Yep. I, I never know who's on. That's right. I'm on tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna see us. You <laughs> great. I'm gonna see us tomorrow. Yes. Um. Couple upcoming events as well. We have a conversation with AARP about social social security. Um, we very intentionally planned that as an evening event, and that's on Tuesday, September 24th at 5.30. We are asking that you register for that event through the AARP website. Um, if you look at Constant Contact Chronicle, we've got the link in there in terms of registering, uh, but that, um, that's gonna happen, so please come to that as well. A couple other things that are coming up that I also wanted to make you aware of on Tuesday, October 8th at one o'clock, um, uh, the principal assessor, Mark uh, Datril, and finance director, Charlene Nardi, are going to be here to talk about tax exemptions for older adults. Um, so they've got a lineup. Um, so that's October 8th at 1 o'clock. 
Um, one of the things that they will be talking about is the tax work off program. Um, and we are finalizing dates for that at this point for the 2025 year. Um, looks like October 7th, the applications will be available and then November 15th, they'll be due. So that's coming up as well. And that will be part of that presentation. We also have an upcoming presentation with two of our community nurses, um, Em and Jennifer on October 17th. This kind of fits with what we've been talking about this evening as well, but they're gonna speak on how to navigate the healthcare system. Um, so how to kind of deal with some of the challenges that um, we unfortunately can experience trying to get a hold of a doctor <laughs> <laughs> or just navigating the health system in general. So I think um, that's a good lineup of presentation uh, presentations with a lot of helpful information. Um, Last on that list is me tomorrow. <laughs> um, Northampton Neighbors Speaker Series. Uh, Northampton Neighbors uh, asked me to do a presentation in terms of programs and services here at the Senior Center. So um, tomorrow at two o'clock, I will be doing that presentation. And you know, they always take these things and put them on YouTube. They take these things and put them on YouTube. So you can put a link, like maybe make me a I'm making it send out a you link. Can, so you that can tell how thrilled I am that I know. I take on YouTube now. For YouTube. I know. But we, <laughs> I, 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 you can be a meme. <laughs> I think, it, you know, your personal feelings, I think it's a great opportunity to drop that link into content contact or right, something. Right, right. Not make just make get our own promotions. Out. And mm -hmm. say, if you can't come, then you can always watch the reruns. That's right. <laughs> Or, or you can send it to a rerun land. The October 8th is one o'clock. One o'clock. <laughs> and that's yes. all about tax exempt for elders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's great. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward. Enough. Yeah, I'm looking forward to serious all seriousness. <laughs> <laughs> all joking aside, I'm I am looking forward to it. And yeah, so it'll be hopefully a good discussion about it trying to throw a few things in there that people may not know. Um, and yes, there are a few numbers in there as well. Just oh, good. But, um, but anyway, yeah, so that, and then I would be remiss if I did not mention, go ahead, fill it in. Do what I'm gonna say next. Doozy do parade. <laughs> <laughs> the doozy do parade yes. is, is coming up right around the corner of the 21st. Um, if I, you are- There's only two people around, other than Kim, around this table who've raised their hand to participate. Yeah. What's, well, I'll be there with picture. my proton pack. Sure, <laughs> we would love to have you walk with us if you're able. It's um, fun. You don't have to dress up. You're certainly welcome to dress up in some funny, silly costume if you'd like, or like a Ghostbuster. Yeah, feel free to dress up. <laughs> funny, silly. Costume. Um, yes, it is. It is. You know, it's a good time, and and it's just a nice party down Main Street. Um, so if you'd like to join, please. And it raised, me I, mean, I think last year it was like between 40 or $50,000. Yeah. It was raised. Isn't that amazing? For, for um, Northampton. Right 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 so. Thank you. Thank you. By the time you meet over on Halloween. I can send an email to confirm, but if you, yes, I think that might be a yes. That a yes? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, that was information I heard gathering. It's clear. It was information gathering. The, yeah. The parade kicks off at 11. So I would think somewhere between 10 30, 10 45. Um, since we're just a walking group and not involving a car or band. Or yeah, we don't have a tiny. float or anything. Yeah, we don't have a oh, float. Yeah. Or anything. The float might be next year, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, and then we'll, I, I don't know what our number is yet in terms of lining up, but if I get that information, I'll let you know. And then it goes just goes down Main Street, um, down to Plastic Park. And Anybody that has a Pluto skirt or anything, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good, but yeah, definitely. Fun and good time we had there. And I think that's, I think that's about all I have for my update at the moment. Hey, Kim. Can yeah, I yeah. can I interject? I'm over Hi, here. Um, we had the triad meeting yesterday, and the Sand for Seniors program will be happening on November 20th. They'll be doing the deliveries. I have the spreadsheet again, so if you know anyone that needs a sand bucket, have them contact the senior center. Um, and then they will be delivered on the 20th. And also, we're having the veterans luncheon on November 7th. Um, here at the senior center. So anyone that wants that needs to sign up with us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, and and I will, I nice to see you. 
<laughs> I have dogs running in and out, so it's easier yes, to keep that off. <laughs> I, I will uh, mention one other thing as well, too, just to make you aware that the Friends of the Northampton Senior Center have chosen to move forward with doing another golf tournament um, coming up in 2025. And so- They raised money. Yes. So the amazing thing is, is, you know, I, I can't thank that group enough um, for their efforts with the golf tournament. The first golf tournament raised over $14,000. Wow. So they're going to, they're going to do it again. And it's going to be, I, I, you know, what I meant to write the date down and I did not, but it's in May, 2025, but just know that that's happening. So if you're interested in golfing or interested in volunteering your time or helping in some way, they are are doing that as well. So if if they if if they're interested, I think that they should have our emails and and have us be like, you know, a listserv <laughs> part of you know, like they could just, you know, if they want to send out stuff because it, it's hard to know what they're doing. Um what country club usually hosts it? It is in it's uh it's in Aguilam. Is it St. Anne's? Was it St. Anne's? St. Anne's and Feeding mm -hmm. Hills. Yep. Oh, okay. And also they're doing their pie sale. The holiday yeah. pie oh. orders just went out. <laughs> it's it's pie sale. Pie sale again. Again. Yes. Best pies. <laughs> Chocolate cream. <laughs> yes. The um that information on the pie sale, um, including the the order form will be in the October Chronicles. So you'll see that. Okay. Are we doing food for the voting this this year? We are, yes, we are going to do that. We're trying to figure out exactly how, what we're thinking about doing. I know we've done bake sales in the past. What we were thinking about doing is just opening up the coffee shop so that we could sell baked goods, probably some larger, you know, maybe yeah. a loaf of bread too. I mean, we'll take a look at what Kevin um, is able to accommodate. We'll probably have the um, coffee shop open though, so that people can purchase coffee too. I think that's terrific. I'm just thinking the last bake sale that I did that's the people we're looking for. Yeah. Combinations of coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chicken in the morning. Baked goods are great, but where's my coffee? It goes yes. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the full package, that, yeah. baked good and baked good. Different, I think a lot of people bought stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty. You say election day is a rainy day. I don't know how that always happens. Well, but this is this is a big but... election time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a it's gonna be so, a big crowd. <laughs> coffee certainly would be. I <laughs> I'm thinking it's gonna be. <laughs> As a, I don't know. I, I maybe was one of the three people in North Engine who voted on primary day. It was I think I was the only person the whole time I was at lead school. <laughs> and there's the vaccine clinic coming up too, so we have to pre-register. We want a COVID shot. Yes. Mm. When it, when is that scheduled for you? October 7th, although I'm also, I'm that that's pretty full at this point. I'm not sure if there's still openings left or not. And certainly we'll continue to work with but what, what services. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, I know there's multiple, yeah. I believe Around. multiple locations, yeah. not just here. So, yeah. Well, we'll see yeah. us in here in East so. Um, A quick update, the I think I mentioned it in, in June when, we, when last we were together. Um, the provider forum that we're doing about, of you know, at the loose title is you know, can you afford to grow old in your gift, kind of thing. And there's a tentative date in October that I can't remember, the 14th. But anyway, so it's mid October. I'm not remembering it. Either. It's the, again the purpose is for service providers such as Highland Valley. Um, to come together in a structured discussion just to get some sense of what they're seeing, you know, some, some kind of questions. Are there needs that you can't meet? Um, what are people asking for, et cetera? Just to get some provider information um, before we then open. So it's not open to the public. It's just an invite only for providers. Um, we have a list of people that there is doing is doing the, in the inviting. The school of Dickinson got invited? It's on our list. Um, the mayor's doing the inviting and will also be here. And it was our decision to get her to do the inviting to get people to come. When is that? We don't have a firm date yet. 
Um, but again, it's not open to it's not it's not open to us. It's not open to the public. It's just for providers. providers so like the Valerie the Valerie's of the world. Oh, because there was some talk um, of a larger meeting. We may do that. That that this is a step one. Mm -hmm. But there's no no decision. I think there will be a larger one that is more of a public thing. But this was the intention of this was to get get a real handle on what the, what people are providers are seeing and experiencing to get, get ourselves out of the assumption mode, get more into reality mode, and to use that information to then structure a more public feedback session. That, that, no, it's not because we're not providers. So we're, we, we ourselves are not service providers. So that's why we're not the audience. And so the outcome of that meeting, we would, uh, the senior center, me, us, and some of the people would have access to. Oh, sure. I think, I think well, I mean, everyone who participates, and I believe the senior centers are participant, is going to have a summary of what people were saying. It's very important. Next yeah. No, I think it's, I'm personally thrilled that the mayor is willing to do it because I think that was, that was in my book, the key to get people to participate, particularly. Our friends in some organizations who don't always play nicely in the sandbox with other <laughs> service providers. So the, again, that's sort of even though I know, but when is that planned? And we've got a date in October that you moms can remember. <laughs> okay, right. so October. It's in October. It's in before before the middle of October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So presumably by our November meeting, we should have some mm -hmm. feedback. Um, that's it for the agenda. Our next meeting is October 10. Unless there's any other agenda. Well, we can't bring up any other agenda topics, I'm sorry. <laughs> As we know, I'm sorry, but it's just going to say anything else. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Val. Thanks, all. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.